Hello viewers, 4DIYers here back with a tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to use a dial vernier caliper. Now what I'll be using for an example here is a socket to show the three different types of measurements that this unit is capable of. Now this particular unit is measured in Imperial. Now to go over some of the basic parts of the caliper here, first I'll be starting with the outside diameter jaws you can see on the front side here. Then we'll also have jaws on the back side which are used to measure the inside diameter of an object. Moving down to the bottom side of the unit here, we also have a depth probe which can be used to measure the depth of an object. Then moving over here we have a lock here which is used to lock the slide back and forth. So when you do take a measurement you can lock this in place and it doesn't move until you take the full reading down. Now this one doesn't have it equipped on it but normally they do have a lock on the dial as well. So when you do zero this setting it doesn't move. Next moving on what we also have here is a thumb wheel which we use to slide this back and forth. And we also have a scale on the bottom side here which is used to measure the uh, one inch increments. Now this particular unit does go up to six inches. Now you can get them in a larger uh, measurement as well. I've seen them as uh, high as 15 inches. Next, the other measurement it can also do here is the first decimal place which is the tenths. And the dial indicator here is used to measure the hundredths and thousandths uh, increments. Now as for maintaining your caliper, besides always keeping the jaws clean before every time you use it, now you always want to make sure you do handle this with delicacy. Don't drop it because that can affect the accuracy of it and damage the jaws as well. And you can see in here there is a small gear and what this does is this operates the dial itself. Now you always want to make sure with any caliper is just add a little bit of uh, lubricant oil to here just to ensure that everything does work correctly. You don't want to add too much where any uh, debris if you're working around a lot of metal shavings and such where that's going to stick inside there as well. If you do find that is sticking inside there you can go ahead and just use a little bit of cleaner to spray that out and then apply some lubricant again. Now every time before you start using your vernier you always want to make sure the jaws are clean. Now that applies to all the jaws whether it is the outside diameter, inside diameter or the depth gauge. Normally what can happen if you are working with some dirty parts, the grime can build up and therefore affect the accuracy of your tool. Now normally what I recommend to clean that is either using just a piece of paper, you can use a cloth, you can even use a little degreaser on there just to clean the grime off if you do find that it is baked on there. Now next moving on, when the jaws are fully closed here, just to show you, you always want to make sure your unit is zeroed. So as you can see this one here, you can rotate this back and forth to ensure it is all the way. Now normally when you're closing the jaws here you always want to make sure you do apply somewhat of a medium pressure here. When you're always doing the measurements always apply the same amount of pressure just to ensure all the measurements will be uh, within accuracy. Now normally as I mentioned before besides this lock here you will have a lock down at the bottom as well. Uh, unfortunately this one isn't equipped with it. Normally what you do is you lock the outside ring so it does not move when you are opening or closing the vernier. Now next moving on to the larger scale here. So on the larger scale here, the larger numbers which we will have with the larger lines will be the one inch marks. So as you can see here we start from zero and then we move up to one inch so on and so forth until we go all the way up to uh, whatever the maximum measurement your vernier will do. In this case uh, this is a six inch vernier. Next moving on we'll have the smaller lines in here. Now this, what this measures is the first decimal place or the tenth. So we have one tenth, tw two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, so on and so forth until we go all the way up to one inch and then start over again. Now what determines or what spot we are is this little spot right here, this little uh, metal tab. Now as you can see here we already are past the one inch line and to move on we already pass the one tenth line and you can also see this on the gauge as well because every time the needle goes past zero we move a whole tenth or first decimal place. Now beyond the tenth decimal place we also have the dial indicator here. Now what this covers is the hundredths and thousandths decimal places. So as we can see here we move all the way around this needle and it goes a full hundredth. So First here, what we'll start by doing is looking at, so we go all the way, we'll have zero at the top side here, the needle has moved past that, all the way past 10, so 10 will be the hundredth decimal place, and then we go past a, another couple 
uh, lines here, which include the thousandths, which is the final measurement. So basically what we're looking for at a measurement here is 1 inch 0.114. So just to go over that again here, now with the 1 inch and first decimal place, we have the scale that takes care of that measurement. Now as for the hundredths and thousandths decimal place, we have the dial indicator to take care of that measurement. Now taking our first measurement here, as you can see I've already zeroed it and I've made sure the jaws are already clean. So using this thumb wheel here. Now, if you are using this, you always want to make sure that the lock on the back side is loose because you will find it does open or close hard. So you always want to make sure that that is loose and that is not tightened down just yet. So what we'll do first is we'll open it up. Then using the socket as an example here, what we'll do is we'll put it on the outside jaws here. Now we want to make sure there's a medium pressure here. I wouldn't apply it too light because you want to make sure it is on the object. We also want it to be too hard on it where it's going to not move freely here in the jaws. So what we'll do there is take the measurement, come around to the top side here, and lock the jaw into place. Careful not to move the caliper there. Pop that out and then take the reading. Now as you can see with this measurement here, with reference to where the jaw is located on the scale, you can see it just past the six tenths mark. Now we're still under one inch. You can see hopefully you're able to see on the camera here, might be just slightly hidden in behind the uh, dial indicator portion here, but we're still under one inch anyway. Moving on then, when we look at the uh, scale on the dial indicator itself, we can see we're past 60, so that would give us uh, six hundredths of an inch so far. So, so far we're left with 0 0.66, and then moving on to the final number here, when I said it was past 60, then it went all the way up to 67, which the seventh is the thousandths number. So we're left with a final number here of 0 0.667 thousandths of an inch. So next moving on, you want to make sure this lock has been freed so you can close the jaws back up and it doesn't put any drag on the unit. You want to make sure these jaws are clean uh, so it doesn't affect the accuracy. Then we can go ahead and zero the uh, dial. Next, moving on, we'll also be cleaning these jaws as well to make sure they are clean because we are doing an inside dimension. So first, what we'll start by doing here is opening the jaws up. We'll take a inside measurement of the back side of the socket here, moving the socket back and forth to ensure that there is medium pressure and that we do have a good surface that we can take the measurement from. What we'll do here then is lock it back up. Again, move the part and we can then take a measurement. So again, taking reference with the edge of the jaw here, as you can see, we've passed the two-tenths mark, so we're still under one inch. Then moving on to the dial indicator here, we can see the needle has gone around here to 54. So with that, will give us a final measurement of 0 0.254 thousandths of an inch. Now again, moving on to the final measurement here. Now we've already used the outside diameter, inside diameter, and now we'll be doing depth. So this is a little awkward to show on the camera here, but what you want to do here is slowly slide it open, ensuring that the caliper was zeroed before you do use it. And you can see the probe does come out all the way. Now the probe does extend out the full length as what the caliper is recommended for. And you can see what we do is we'll slide it out just a little bit more. We'll push it back in there as you can see. And we will move it around applying, again, medium pressure using your thumb just to ensure that it is on a true surface there for the measurement and then we'll continue to go ahead and lock the unit into place and then we can tend to take a measurement from here. With this measurement here, as you can see, we are still under the one inch mark. As you can see just based by the zero here, and we haven't come past the one inch mark line which would be somewhere around in this location just underneath the dial indicator portion. And the edge of the jaw here has passed the three mark. So, so far we've achieved a number of 0 0.3. Now, moving on to the dial indicator portion here, you can see the needle has gone around past the halfway point on the dial indicator here, going all the way just before 60. So we ended up with 59. So which gives us a final number of 0 0.359 thousandths of an inch. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.